Hey, how are you? I am Chris Robin, a.k.a. at Detroit Beastie, here with Team Riser Fall to talk some Sunday night football. The Indianapolis Colts head to Dallas to take on the Cowboys, and kickoff is at 8.20 p.m. Before I get into this game, and truth be told, it's it's kind of what you see is what you get with this one, with all the stars and, and studs here. But before I get into the game, it's going to be pretty cut and dry. I will say that I've been known to drone on for 20 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes, and I, I realistically don't see that happening today with what we have on tap here. Before I get into all that, make sure you go to the website at Team Riser Fall. When you get there, use promo code BC the key however you want to put it, uh, open uh, open out your, your can of pop, Coke, whatever you want to do, and use that promo code and you will get $10 off your first month of premium services here at the website and a Fantasy Cruncher voucher that rolls over month to month and you can crunch lineups, DFS, optimize until your heart's content. Let's not forget about the study hub that they continue to add new and fun tabs, uh, red zone stuff, or ownership percentages, everything across the board. If you play DFS and you're not part of Team Riser Fall, they then you're just doing it wrong. Is that my opinion? Is it a fact? Probably a little bit of both, but let's talk about this game, shall we? The Colts head to Dallas uh, in this one. Uh, here, when we look at it, as it stands right now, before kickoff here tonight at 8.20 p.m., I would imagine that the over-under might get bumped up another half a point and just make it an even uh, 40, Not that's not even, but 45 total points here. And this thing opened uh, on Monday morning at over-under 43 and a half, so it tells you where kind of where some of the money is going. And again, it's, it's the you know, the second to last game of week 13, Sunday night, we get Monday night and then we're done. We move on to week 14 already, but this game here, uh, if you, if you look at, at local uh, newspapers, you go to Indianapolis, you go to Dallas, or like most Americans do, we get all of our information on social media or your, or your cell phone. Just open that sucker right now, pause the video, or you can just while you're playing along. And when you look at this thing, you're going to get two drastic opinions on this one. It could be from the same websites, from the same publications. It, it'll, it tries to paint a picture that the Colts are uh, down and out and JT's been a disaster in seasonal formats and you know what I mean uh, that Michael Pittman hasn't taken the next step and they're just going to get run over tonight by the Dallas Cowboys I think that is uh, not wise to do and when you look on the Dallas side of things Dallas are intact they're explosive they look amazing C.D. Lamb has finally come into his own and Tony Pollard in unison with, uh, with Ezekiel Elliott is really running the table here and Micah Parsons and this Cowboys DST is unbelievable unbelievably good and they could sack you on the moon on Mars it don't matter you see what I'm getting at here it's just the social media trying to paint this false narrative here and again I, I, I've been known to uh, you know paint narratives here uh, but sometimes they're they're awful sometimes they're good but not in a way like this about a football game here because I do believe this game is a lot closer than folks uh, are expected to expected to be here and you're giving the Colts 10 and a half points get this the Colts have only lost by 10 or more points once this season so that's spread is whacked out and when you look at the final score and everything here we're going to see here that I would prefer the Colts in betting circles and betting formats but let's talk about this thing from a DFS perspective shall we when we look at Matt Ryan Dak Prescott let's start with Matt Ryan uh 14-5 on FanDuel 9-2 on DK 20 bucks on Yahoo I have Matt Ryan 25 completions 260 yards a touchdown pass this guy is going to be uh you know under duress all game but you know what we said up what I said about Dallas and their DST and Parsons. It's true. This DST, the Cowboys uh, uh, defense has been unbelievable all year and they're going to make life a living hell for Matt Ryan here. So you're saying, well, dang, Matt Ryan's going to, you know, probably throw the ball close to 40 times, 260 yards, probably good for an INT or two. I love the Dallas Cowboys DST, but that's the, that we'll, we'll get there. But from a, from a statistical standpoint, Matt Ryan isn't a half bad move in those uh, big GPPs, especially if you're going to max enter something, whether it's 20 lines, 100 lines 150 lines Matt Ryan should be uh, under your radar they did they maybe they, they didn't call him Matty Ice for no reason that that still is uh, is around he's not dead and gone he's not 80 years old so Matt Ryan deserves us a, a little bit of respect here tonight when we look at Dak Prescott uh he's 16 grand on FanDuel 10-2 on DK $31 on Yahoo Indianapolis 12th overall against opposing quarterbacks I do believe Dak Prescott has one heck of a game 
kind of a must have in, in DFS formats, whether it's that the old uh, captain MVP spot and then a flex spot, and we run it back with similar lines, and we're just going to move Dak in and out uh, from a captain MVP to flex and vice versa. When we look at Dak Prescott, 18, 18 maybe 19 completions here, about 220 yards, looking at three to four carries for another 15 yards and a pair of touchdowns. I do believe that Dallas hangs 30, 30 to 31 points in this one, but I mean, bare minimum, they're going to score at least four times in my book, in my eyes. How many of those is Dak Prescott going to be uh, have his hands in here? We could say three, we could say four. So to me, that makes Dak Prescott absolutely red hot for tonight. But again, the ownership percentage is going to get in our way a little bit, but that's to be uh, expected in single game slates here. As we go down the list, talk about the running backs, Jonathan Taylor, uh, Dallas right now, sixth overall against opposing running backs, JT, uh, 15 grand on FanDuel, 10 grand on DraftKings, $24 on Yahoo. I don't give a crap about all that seasonal stuff. He was the 101. Uh, folks are pulling their hair. I, I took uh, JT over Christian McCaffrey. I took JT over, over Chubb. All that stuff goes by the wayside when we talk about DFS. This is a one and done kind of thing, which everybody out there watching, you right now watching, you know that. So uh, you could put all that crap aside. Jonathan Taylor looks to have uh, regained that confidence on the field and the workload's going to match it here. I'm thinking 20 carries, about 90 yards, four to five receptions, another 30 yards, and a touchdown for sure, without a doubt, makes for a beautiful anytime touchdown bet. So we're looking at about 110 all-purpose yards. If you want to get a little wild, we could say 120, 125 all-purpose yards, but that touchdown will absolutely be there in a game where, you know, we could call it positive or negative. I've really never put a label on that because, again, Indianapolis is going to be down here uh, probably quick, probably 14, 17 points or something uh, at one point in this game. So on paper, that would be a negative game script, correct? But in DFS and seasonal formats, I think that's a positive game script. You're down 14 or 17 points. You're going to be moving the ball. Matt Ryan's going to be chucking the ball. JT going to be on the field a whole heck of a lot tonight. What does that do for Deion Jackson here? 6-5 on FanDuel, 4-6 on DK, $10 on Yahoo, filled in uh, admirably for JT while he was in and out of the lineup. I just don't see a ton of work here, but I would, uh, again, you know, knowing me, bottom of the barrel and everything I do uh, have uh, that I have done in my DFS career, Deion Jackson makes for a sneaky move. And again, if, if you can live with only one or two carries, one or two receptions, 10 or 12 yards in your lineup, then I think that's the move. If you can live with that, then we can live with the fact what happens if this guy takes a pass 30 or 40 yards to the house. Nobody called it. Nobody expected it. But we, we did, had a little inkling, right? We we had we took a nap uh, this afternoon and we had a little dream or we daydreaming, right? We're eating and we're, you know, we're thinking, Deion Jackson, uh, worth is he worth the price tag? I think he is. When we look at the Dallas Cowboys running backs, something very cool and fun is happening in Dallas, right? Zeke Elliott's been the RB1 for years. Tony Pollard has kind of asserted himself, asserted his dominance here. And in a way, Dallas is like, yeah, go, Tony, take take the reins for now. And I think in a way, uh, I don't want to say the confidence is going to be over, it's going to be maxed out for Tony Pollard. But when Dallas makes it into the playoffs, I think they lean on, on Zeke Elliott. So in a way, Zeke's kind of getting like a bunch of active rest days where in game formats, Tony Pollard gets to do as he pleases. And Zeke Elliott sees his fair share of work as well. And he'll score, the, he'll score touchdowns, but we don't have to worry if you're a Dallas fan or you're Zeke Elliott in general, you don't have to worry about, you know, just 25 to 30 total targets and touches a game. You know, it's week 13, you know, I'm getting tired. I'm not, I'm not the spring chicken I used to be. So when we look at Tony Pollard, 13-5 on FanDuel, 8-2 on DK, 28 bucks on Yahoo, 13-14 carries, 60 yards on the ground, uh, two or three receptions for another 20 yards. And when we look at Zeke Elliott, 14 to 15 carries, 60, 65 yards here, a reception or two for another 10 yards. And I have Zeke Elliott uh, to score a touchdown here. So yeah, uh, Dallas Cowboys, another primetime game. We, we talked about it on Thanksgiving. Primetime for Dallas is Zeke time across the board, right? You know what? They're playing Sunday at 1 p.m. against the Lions. You know, you, you could probably pencil Tony Pollard in to get it done, to get a ton of work. You know, Sunday at 1 p.m. against Cincinnati. You know, again, Tony Pollard. But when it's prime time, you know, it this this NFL, it's not it's not very strange. It's not easy to figure this thing out. It's a business. And right now the Cowboys and Zeke Elliott are joined at the hip. They are one in the same year. So on a primetime game, Sunday night at home, fresh off the Thanksgiving holiday, look for Zeke Elliott to be very much involved because it's a primetime game. Maybe that's crazy. It's one of those shit narratives I was talking about at the beginning of the show here, but I think it holds true. When we look at the wide receivers, Mike Pittman, Paris Campbell, 
Alec Pierce, uh, Ashton Doolin. The only real guy I want to talk about is, is Michael Pittman here. The Cowboys, 13th overall against opposing wide receivers. Pittman, 13000 bucks on FanDuel. DK, 9-6. And on Yahoo, uh, Pittman is 16 bucks. We've seen flashes from Michael Pittman. We know he has it in him. It's just a case of the quarterback getting him the football. He, he is a case of a crap kind of game script from the head coach. And at this point, the Colts are, are, are hanging by a thread here. So it would be in their best interest to just target Mike Pittman, uh, you know, nine or 10 times. I would be cool with 11 or 12 times for seven, eight receptions, 75 to 80 yards here. And, you know, just getting into the end zone any which way he can. One thing I will say about Paris Campbell, he is uh, 11 grand on FanDuel, 5-2 on DK, and 16 bucks on Yahoo. Seven, eight targets, four or five receptions, and 50 yards or so. In DFS formats, it's beautiful. I want to say in seasonal formats, which again, I don't really talk about much anymore, we need to cool our jets. It's, it's been a few a few good games for this kid, but we've seen this happen in the past across the board with how many hundreds, thousands of, of wide receivers here. Michael Pittman is the alpha in this offense, and I think we should you know use that uh, in our DFS lines uh, tonight. When we look at the Cowboys wide receivers, Michael Gallup, yet again, a questionable tag. I'm not putting the young man down, but it's at what point do we are we like, okay, Gallup, it, it, maybe it's time we move on. Maybe it's time we don't even, you know, really think about this anymore. It, it bugs people so much, kind of like Mike Williams. It's like, if you can't get it together on the field, why should we, you know, bother, you know, making graphics or talking about him in DFS circles or seasonal formats? And anyways, it's C.D. Lamb's world when it comes to Dallas and we're just living in it. C.D. Lamb has really come on strong. You love the fact that they're lining this kid up all over the field. They're really, really utilizing his skill set here and really putting DSTs and, and secondaries at a disadvantage. When we look at C.D. Lamb, 14 grand on FanDuel, $10,800 on DK, and on Yahoo, he's 25 bucks. I will say the Colts first, first overall against defending opposing wide receivers. And in a way, I, I, I like that, right? If uh, if Dallas and C.D. Lamb were, were playing a, a DST like Houston, right? Or who's the worst, uh, you know, worst team of all time or actually the season against wide receivers, you know, that then that would make C.D. Lamb chalk, right? And C.D. Lamb is the name across the board could still be considered chalk, but I could see a case here where, you know, more folks than usual kind of fade C.D. Lamb in favor of the DST or the DVP matchup and think they're cool, think they're smart. And, you know, I'm not going to judge anybody by that fact, but C.D. Lamb, regardless who he's playing, again, he could be playing against the Space Jam aliens and this guy would still have nine to ten targets, six, seven receptions, 80 yards and a touchdown. Don't think twice about it. Just plug him in and play him MVP captain and a flex and vice versa. You know the deal. Gallup, no thank you, Noah Brown. There's realistically nobody else in the, for the Dallas Cowboys wide receivers that I'd even care about, right? Noah Brown, maybe a little taste, three to four targets, two to three receptions, 25 or 30 yards. He is only seven grand on FanDuel, four, eight on DK. When we look at the Colts uh, tight ends, it's uh, it's a wasteland. Tight end, across, tight end in general is a wasteland here. Jelani Woods has kind of been this, you know, br not, not breakout, but he's been like a Cinderella story the last few weeks, and we're not even sure he's going to play this week. He's got a questionable tag. Mo Ali Cox, can we count on him? I'm not sure, but when you look at Ali Cox, two to three targets, one or two receptions, 15 to 20 yards, I believe Mo Ali's averaging like 9.7, 9.8 yards a reception. You know, come heck or high water, you can count on him to at least be on the field, right? You know, you're going to you're gonna get X amount of snaps from Mo Ali Cox. Jelani Woods, uh, only six grand on Fandle. He is 4-2 on DK. And when you look at Jelani Woods, uh, just be mindful, double check before kickoff here at 820. Woods, three to four targets, two to three receptions, 25 yards. Uh, Kyle Grant, uh, Granson, six grand on FanDuel, two eight on DK, about 10 bucks on Yahoo, three, four targets, two to three receptions, about 20 yards. I see no rhyme or reason to, to moving these tight ends around and, and getting them in and out of your lineups. You know, it, it's a it, realistically, it's the, the shake of the dice. It's a throw of however you want to put it here. So to me, the only tight end worth using tonight is Dalton Schultz here. Indianapolis Colts, 15th overall against opposing uh, tight ends. Dalton Schultz, 7-5 on FanDuel. On DK, Dalton Schultz is 5-8. And on Yahoo, he's 17 bucks, 5-6 to six targets, 4-5 to five receptions, 40 yards. We saw what his, uh, I don't even want to say Thanksgiving was his ceiling with all the catches and the touchdowns here. But in a way, that is. It's a glimpse into what Dalton Schultz can do when him and Dak are on the same page. And you better watch out, right? If, if, if Tony and Zeke and Dak are, are moving the football and C.D. Lamb is stretching the sucker out and you get guys like Gallup or Noah Brown, you know, on the outsides as well. I mean, Dalton Schultz is going to have a field day right in 
the middle of that field and inside the red zone, the, the middle of the field could be called the end zone as well. So Dalton Schultz a must have tonight and we go down. When we get to the kickers, Chase or Brett Maher, to be honest with you, I would prefer Chase McLaughlin, the, the Indianapolis Colts uh, kicker here. 8-5 on FanDuel, 4 grand on DK. I have a 2 for 2 extra points, but I have him hitting uh, 3 field goals, 3 for 3 field goals. So he's going to be 5 for 5, perfect on kicks tonight. And again, who cares if Dallas wins? Chase will get the the, the work in in terms of kicking here. When we look at the DSTs, there's only one one thing we got to mention here. The Cowboys sack potential, and this one is through the wolf roof, wolf, however you want to put it. The Colts, 32nd overall in giving points away to the opposing DST. It is going to be a ridiculous captain spot MVP. Goes without saying, but you and me, you and 100,000 other folks know the same thing, so be careful in what contest we're using the Cowboys uh, DST in that that captain MVP spot. They are 10 grand on FanDuel, 6-2 on DK, and $23 on Yahoo. 3-4 to four sack, right? 3-4 to four sacks, right? I mean, 4 sacks could be kind of a 3, could be a floor, 4-5, to five, 6. I mean, how many sacks are we talking here with Matt Ryan uh, not being a spring chicken, as I said, moving around and just and spinning, boom, right into a defender, falls down. One or two of those might be a strip sack. One of those might be a fumble, return for a touchdown. The possibilities are endless for the Dallas Cowboys DST tonight. Make sure uh, we're using them. When we look at the the, the, the the betting trends in this one, the Colts 5-0 and against the spread the last five games on the road against a team with a winning record. The over is 4-0 and Dallas's last four games following a straight-up win. And as I said, Indianapolis has only lost by 10 or more points one time this season here. So, Chris, final score. I think the Cowboys get it done. Uh, and, and on paper, it's going to look like a blowout, but the Colts will, well, you know, they'll put some points on the board late in this thing and make it look a little bit more respectable than it is. But the Dallas Cowboys will win tonight at home 30 to 23. So Dallas wins at home. Uh, they, they hang some points. We get in JT, Pittman, Lamb, Dalton Schultz, and the Cowboys in DFS formats. But if you're going to bet tonight, I'm taking the Colts plus 10 and a half points. That seems like such a good juicy bet, especially the last game of Sunday to really hammer home our parlays as the last leg of this whole thing. So give me Dallas to win this thing 30 to 23. And I'll see you again the same time tomorrow for Monday Night Football. Be good. Be safe. Talk to you later. Bye.